Good morning. I must say that uh, I feel very privileged to be here on this stage to talk to all of you and to also share this stage where we have so many inspiring people who are sharing their ideas. Their ideas about how they can change the world. Ideas which I hope by the end of this, uh, this talk will leave each and every one of you here inspired. Leave you with an entrepreneurial zeal or a passion, ignited a passion within you to go out there into the world and make it a better place. I too have an idea that I want to share with you. But before I do that, I want to share, I actually want to take you on a journey which came to a climax about three years ago or less. But this journey of mine started since from when I was born. As a young child, I did what was uh, told to me by society. Society told me that I should follow a pathway where I should go to primary school, I should go to secondary school, I should go to university, follow a formal education, and at the end of this journey, there will be this bright prize, this beautiful job that will be waiting for you. A job that once you start, once you put your first foot on that career ladder, you will live, happy, you will live happily ever after. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that didn't happen to me. <laughs> and this, my story, ladies and gentlemen, is but a drop in the ocean. Okay, you can see this. Fantastic. So this is exactly what happened to me. I became a highly educated, highly qualified, unemployed graduate. I don't know if you can see this image here uh, on the screen. This gentleman here has a PhD, published in three, uh, uh, has three post uh, postdocs, has six papers. And the funny story about this, I actually have a friend who has this sort of achievements, but also works as a cashier at a, at a supermarket. That is the reality in which we live in today. Worldwide, according to the International Labour Organization, worldwide there are 200 million unemployed people. That's a staggering fact. And according to Youth Business International, there are 75 million unemployed youths, youths like you and I. In Nigeria alone, across a population of 156 million people, the unemployment rate is at 24%. Gone are the days where a model worked where you go through a formal education, and at the end of that education, you would have a shiny, bright job. It worked for our parents, but unfortunately, that's not working for us. In fact, that same report by the International Labor Organization categorizes our generation, our decade, the decade in which we are supposed to open our wings and prosper and flourish, start our jobs, start families. This decade in which we live in is actually, cut, it's actually been said as the jobless generation, uh, the jobless decade. And this isn't just the case within developing countries like Nigeria. No, it's actually happening in developed countries. Take, a, take uh, an instance in Spain. There's 50% unemployment in Spain, a developed country. Likewise in Greece. And it's not even pretty in the UK or in the US either. Talk less of developing countries itself. And youths are three times less likely to get a job as other demographics. So what does this mean? This means that youth unemployment is a very, very huge problem. Well, as, uh, as the statistics say, being one person in 200 million people, I, I couldn't get a job. So I just thought to myself, wait, why don't I just create a job, invent a job for myself? Isn't that exciting? Really? And I'm sure there are many of you here in the crowd. Just raise up your hand and tell me, do any of you want to start a business of yours? Maybe a charity, maybe a bakery, maybe, I don't know, uh, something that can help with the energy problem that we have here in Nigeria? So I can see. Okay, yes, I can see a few of you. But also, think about it. Do you, know, do you know of any 
supportive system that can actually help you reach your potential, help you start your business, maybe help you start with that manufacturing company that, you want to, that you've been thinking about, dreaming about? No. There's actually a lack of support for aspiring entrepreneurs. And that was the case for me a few years ago. So I just took, I just, uh, took it upon myself. I just thought to myself, just like what the speaker said, the last speaker said, if this is a problem, I'm going to stop complaining about it, stop complaining about being unemployed, and start talking about how do I create a job. And I thought to myself, this could be my job. I could help people start their own businesses. And I could also help businesses that are already up and running solve their most pressing business issues. That was, that's what I took it upon myself to help youths realize the potential. So after coming to this realization, I did some research and I came up with a model, a three-pronged model on how to empower youths through entrepreneurship. And that is the discover, nurture, and grow model, a cyclical process in which we here would discover the entrepreneur, help that entrepreneur discover that, that big idea, that's big idea that they have burning in their, in their hearts, whether big or small, and give them the best entrepreneurial training that you can get out there. Apart from this entrepreneurial training, education, we will then help this entrepreneur get access to key resources. And when I mean key resources, I'm talking about intellectual property, you know, other like-minded entrepreneurs, inspira inspirational entrepreneurs, which they can then draw uh, resources from. So supposing you have a business idea, you know, you're, you're the leader of the entrepreneurial team and you need maybe uh, a marketing guru or maybe a master planner, a master strategist, or you need somebody, you need a number cruncher, somebody who can help with financial forecasting to make sure that your business idea is viable and sustainable. We give you access to this platform comprised of fellow entrepreneurs from around the world. And after going through this nurture uh, uh, stage, we would then encourage you to grow. We would encourage that young entrepreneur to use their resources to grow their business, the resources which they acquire from the nurture stage. But also, we would encourage that same entrepreneur to bring one more person into the entrepreneur community. And would encourage that entrepreneur to be a mentor. And that's how it works. And it works all over the world. The research that led to this model has been tried and tested in uh, China. And statistically speaking, 70% of businesses that go through this process are successful. They are up and running, even after three years. And that's the uh, fight or flight stage. After three years, if your business is still running, it's a very good chance that you will continue running even up to and hopefully after the owner uh, sells it or goes on. So once I started, <laughs> once I came up with all this research, I started an organization called the Inter International Youth Development Organization. And I was a bit cheeky. I got, um, from the research, I found out that it's very successful in China. They have about 50 offices there where they employ this methodology. So I actually got um, one of the key people there. He serves as an uh, international advisor to Youth Business China. And at the moment, he's an entrepreneur in residence at Cambridge University. And he's part of, a, of, a, of my entrepreneurial team. So you might be thinking, all right, you just help one person. You help one person start a business. Big deal. How is it going to help solve the huge unemployment that we have there in the world? Well, it needs, you just need one person. And you have a trickle-down effect. Let's take, for instance, you have this aspiring entrepreneur who wants to start a bakery. The person starts a bakery, and on average, that person employs about three people. And these three people all have their families that they go to. They are sole breadwinners of this family. They have their, their wives to go back to, their husbands to go back to. They have their children to look after. 
And you can see it goes down from the very top of that one entrepreneur, goes down all the way to the, to the family. And we know that businesses do not exist as an entity by itself in, in an economy, no. It, businesses actually exist as an integral part of a supply chain. So let's say this entrepreneur here, who has a bakery, for that entrepreneur to be successful, they need to buy you know, raw materials, maybe raw materials like uh, sugar, flour, water, whatnot. And they have to source that, that raw materials from another entrepreneur, another entrepreneur that goes, you know, pro buys processed goods, buys raw materials, and then provides it at a convenient uh, price to this baker. And also, this baker sells his baked goods to other businesses. Let's take, for example, um, a hospitality business. You know, maybe a hotel chain goes to this baker and says, okay, all right, we want to buy cupcakes, we want to buy bread from you, and stock it in our restaurant. And that's how it works. So this entrepreneur is part of a chain, and this other businesses employ people, and through employment, these people are also able to look after their families. And once they're able to look after their families, we know what happens, there's prosperity, in the, in the community. It builds your community, there's a rapport. And through this model, we hope we can build a better society. I say this again, that I, I feel privileged to be here on this stage uh, to speak with other inspiring people, uh, some who I've learned a lot from. But also, I say so because uh, many years ago, as uh, I think the presenter said, uh, I was the first Secretary General of the Nigerian Model United Nations, and I made a speech here on this stage, in this same, uh, this same location, the same hotel. And my, one of the sentences that I'm going to repeat here went like this. Give a man a fish, and you feed him for a day. Show him how to catch fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. And that is at the very essence of the businesses that I've started. And the essence is the importance of knowledge and entrepreneurship. Thank you very much.